Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Divorced Woman's Guide podcast. How are you doing today? I am doing amazing, and I am so happy you guys have tuned in because I am here with a very special guest today. And that special guest is my dear friend, Marlo Lyons. Hello, Marlo. How are you? Hi, Wendy. It's awesome to see you. You too. It's so good to have you here. It is you guys are going to just love the story um, of how Marlo and I are connected and how our lives intertwined. Um, but we are going to talk today about entrepreneurship and switching careers uh, during divorce or even going back to work. Uh, Marlo is a career coach. So I'm going to share a little bit more with you guys today about Marlo, and then we're going to dive into our conversation. So Marlo has spent more than 20 years inspiring, motivating, and empowering people to excel in their careers and business. Marlo's own career is so fascinating, you guys. She transferred her skills to change careers, not just once, but multiple times from a TV news reporter for more than a decade to an entertainment lawyer for another decade, to HR business partner in both entertainment and the medical technology industries, to now executive career coach and strategist. And Marlo currently uses her coaching skills as a strategic HR business partner, working with senior leaders and as a strategic career coach to clients globally. Her HR career coaching and leadership expertise combined with her own personal personal career transitions has provided her so much insight into how to provide each job seeker a strategic path forward, whether that path means obtaining a new job at the right company, transitioning to a new career, recovering from termination, or re-entering the workforce after a long absence, which some of you are experiencing. And so that is why she has now put all of her experiences and clients that she has coached along with a step-by-step -step playbook on how to do it. And it can be found in her new book that is entitled Wanted, A New Career, The Definitive Playbook for Transitioning to a New Career or Finding Your Dream Job. You guys, holy crap, Marlo, I forgot <laughs> about your bio. So let's just... I forgot about the TV news reporter. I knew about everything right. there after that point. <laughs> but you guys, I want to just take a second and let you all know how instrumental Marlo has been in my life and how instrumental she has been in me creating my own business during and after divorce. So you guys know my transparent story where I have talked about how I was married for 15 years when one day, lo and behold, the rug for my life came out from underneath me. And while I was in therapy, I also felt stuck. I didn't feel like therapy was moving me forward. And it wasn't until Marlo posted on Facebook yeah. announcing her career transition, leaving the entertainment law industry and starting her career as a career coach. And and I remember I'm getting goosebumps even just saying that. And I remember, I, I remember to this day, I saw, I stopped and paused on the post and said, what is career? What's coaching? What's career coaching? I'm miserable. I hate my job. Maybe this is the ticket for me. And I remember immediately messaging you on Facebook. Did. And I think we talked that night for we over did. three hours. We did. I remember exactly <laughs> and by the where end I was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and as do I, I was sitting on my couch talking to, I remember it. Mm -hmm. This just, yes. Um, and not only was I guided using Marlowe's coaching skills on that call, she enrolled me in the same <laughs> coaching program that she got <laughs> certified in and it got me motivated to actually hire a life coach along with it. Mm -hmm. And so to this day, I do, I credit Marlo as being my guardian angel in Aww. not just getting through <laughs> um, one of the hardest parts of my life, but really opening a door for me to a piece of, of joy and happiness in my life and my career. And if it weren't for you, I, I honestly don't know where I would have been. And 
I'm so honored to have you here on my podcast today, not just, you know, because we're friends, but because you truly, truly have a gift and the world gets to know about it more so than just your book. Um, They get to know about it here. Um, And everybody listening, you need to go buy this book um, because... (laughs) It's phenomenal. And I'm also featured as one of the clients you are in the story in her book. So anyway, I wanted to share that. And Marlo, from truly the bottom of my heart, like you, you are my guardian angel. Like I I don't know where I would be had I had you not been brave and posted on Facebook that day. So thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. But you took all the steps, right? That's the key, right? I gave you some information and and helped you a little bit, try to understand and transferable skills. We talked about that too, right? Yes. So yes, you know, all those pieces, but you're the one who actually got past your fear. I think that was the big piece, right? The first step is fear and getting past that. And you got past that fear and maybe that phone call did it right. Maybe that first class did it, but you were on fire after that. (laughs) Like I heard it in your voice. You were teary. You were sad. You were trying to figure it out. You were lost. Mm -hmm. And after that call, all I saw was just fire. You were just, (laughs) you were on fire. You're like, I'm going to sign up. I was like, she signed up. (laughs) <laughs> wow. And then you were like, I've already been to my first class. I'm like, you have? <laughs> so, yeah. You just, you never stopped. You just ran, ran toward it, which, which is a big deal, you know, yeah. that you have to be able to take that first step. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, and I know that a lot of the people that I talk to that I coach that are in my communities, so many of them are either having to re-enter the workforce or they've been, they feel stuck in the job that they currently have, that they desire to make a shift. Um, you know, I've got a couple of clients right now who are starting to think about career shifts and and making that move. And you were so instrumental in helping me to see that that was actually possible, that there were skills that were transferable. And I know that so many people that are listening right now feel the very same way, right? They feel very stuck in all aspects of their life um, when they're going through a divorce. And many of them haven't haven't had the opportunity to be in the workforce because they've been home raising kids or they've felt stuck to a job because of a paycheck. So what would you say to our listeners in terms of if they're kind of getting that itch or if they just are feeling stuck with no light at the end of the tunnel, what would you say to them right now? I'd say you're never stuck. I mean, we we've all been there, right? Like I've hit glass ceilings. I've been fired. Um, I've been through it all like everybody else out there. You know, I've been in jobs that were dead end and you're never really stuck. What you are is actually lost right? Because the lost part is I think people confuse with stuck. We're never stuck. We can make any choice we want. It's really about, are you lost? You don't know what to do. Now that's different, right? That's where you got to go out and get those resources, right? That's why I wrote the book because it's a step-by-step guide. And once you figure out, okay, I'm not really stuck. Um, I work with a lot of stay-at-home moms who are getting back in the workforce, eight, nine, 10, 12 years. And they're like, I haven't worked in 12 years, but yeah, you have, you have worked. What you don't want to do is be silly, right? You don't want to say domestic engineer or conflict resolution specialist, right? You don't want to be silly. You do want to take all those skills. I can guarantee most moms have volunteered at their kids' schools, have done other volunteer activities, have, you know, kept their education up, have been doing reading. All of that is applicable, right? That's the transferable skills. So you're never stuck. What you are is lost. Now you have to say, am I willing to not be lost? Am I willing to look for the resources that will help me move out of lost and figure out what I want to do? Right. Because right? whether it's the same job, different job, new job, that's yeah. what it's about. Well, and I think you bring something up that I'd love for you to expand on a little bit more in these transferable skills. Cause I was even just having a conversation yesterday with a client of mine where, you know, I was explaining to her that it, it's not that you get stuck in this field. It's, it's extrapolating, right? It could be um, job responsibilities or just skills that you've honed in while you've been there. I mean, I've been in positions where I have furthered my education as a leader. Um, you know, so t- can you talk a little bit more for our audience about what you mean by transferable skills and also how, how they can enlighten themselves to know what those are? Sure. So everybody, if you've ever worked 
and, and not even just worked. If you've lived life, which we all have, right? We're all alive. So you have transferable skills, right? Transferable skills come in everyday life, but they also come where you work. So for example, if you're an administrative assistant and you want to move in HR, you're like, well, I don't do HR. How do I do that? Right? Well, you're using transferable skills. You are using independent judgment to work with your leaders, right? You are working cross-functionally. You are multitasking all day as an administrative assistant. You are using executive presence because you're working maybe with a CEO or a high-level person in the company. You have to have some level of you know, presence, right? You're able to manage difficult conversations. Um, you're juggling a bunch of different personalities. All of that are tr- all of those things are transferable skills into HR. It's also transferable skills into pretty much everything. Almost all of that is soft skills, right? right? Now you might need a little bit more education. I don't mean go to law school or medical school. Like for example, I had to go back and I took the SPHR and the GPHR for HR. I had a million transferable skills from one job to the next, but I couldn't prove that I actually knew HR when I tried to move into HR. So I thought, you know, why don't I take these tests? I qualified for them. I'm like, why don't I take them? I'll study because then I'll learn more, right? Which is great. And then I'll at least have it on my resume so they know I have a clue, more or less, right? Right. So they know maybe I haven't done it, but I can. Um, same with the executive coaching, right? Getting certified in coaching. I had been coaching for years in my previous jobs, coaching executives, coaching leaders, coaching multiple departments cross-functionally. But coaching is a discipline, right? I was probably more consulting, if you really look at it. Um, and when I went to coach to learn how to be a coach, I was like, oh, it's a little bit different. Okay. But even today, I, I float in and out of coaching, right? In my current job, I float into coaching and then it's consulting and then it's advising and then it's coaching and then it's consulting and then it's advising, right? But the tools, I've put more tools in my tool belt. So the goal is to take the job you're in and look through the lens of the new job. Once you figure out what you want to do, you're looking through the lens of the new job. And when you look through the lens of the new job, you're looking at job descriptions, you're looking at what's required, and you're looking at only those skills, only those skills that apply to the new job. What you don't want to do is muddy up your resume with everything you've done. I see this every day, Wendy, every day. Resumes, they've been, I hired a resume writer. Some of them are great, but most of them put everything you've ever done on your resume. And it's a muddy mess, muddy mess. It doesn't tell me what you want to do. You have to know what you want to do. Only put the accomplishments and the skills that apply to the new job. I had, I got to tell you the story. I had the best accomplishment of my life, right? I thought it was amazing. I got, I was working in immigration, doing some immigration stuff. And I got language in a bill in Congress. Not kidding. I got it in the bill, right? I I thought it was the best thing ever. It is nowhere on my resume. (laughs) And you know why? Because it's not applicable. It's not applicable to anything. I'm not a legislative aide, right? I've had so many accomplishments that are not on my resume. And that's what you have to be okay with. You have to be okay saying, all right, I'm going to go out and celebrate this, maybe with a glass of wine or something else, but I'm going to leave it off, be okay with that, and only put things on that are applicable. Yeah. And, and it sounds like you, you know, there's got to be a strategy right behind the career shift that I'm hearing you say, like there is education that you get to take on for yourself in terms of seeing what it is that you want to do, understanding what the skill set is. So what are some other strategies that you can share with our listeners today? If they're thinking about making that transition or even how to make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the very first thing is knowing what you want to do. And a lot of people focus on things like, well, let's learn your strengths, right? Well, you could love math and never want to work in the math field. I can tell you, I love writing, but I don't ever want to be a writer full time, yeah. right? Like you don't want to do that full time. So knowing your strengths are great, but they're not going to get you there. Um, there's all these tests, you know, MBTI or, you know, all sorts of things that you can go and learn about yourself, which I think are all great. It's always good to learn about yourself, but they're not going to figure out what you want to do. And that's the key word, want right? What you want to do is hinges on your values. You know this, Wendy, as a coach, right? Yeah. When your values are fulfilled, you feel fulfilled and engaged and excited and wanting to work, right? So you have to identify what your values are and really define them. Because Wendy, you and I could both say like family, right? Family's a value of mine. Family's a value of yours, right? And I could say, well, family means my husband and two kids, And you could say, well, family means my kids, my boyfriend, my husband, my this, my that, right? It can mean my cousins, uncles, sisters, brothers, friends. Our values are different. The same thing, family, but they're different, right? So you have to define them. 
And then what you do is you take those skills or take those values and you translate them to skills. And what's good about the book is this is a playbook. It gives you example after example after example of how to do this because people are like, how do you do that? Right? So you transfer them into skills. Then you take those skills that they're transferred into and you translate them to the job description of the job that you're interested in. So the job you want, that lens of the new job, right? Once you figure that out, and, and by the way, I step, skipped a step, finding that new job. So you translate into skills. Now you got to hunt for the job, right? Like before right. You, you don't know what it is, right? So you got to go hunt for it. So hunting for it, I have a very distinct way of doing that. There's multiple ways to do that. And it's not just on LinkedIn. It's not just a Google search. Um, there are websites that have every single job in the world on them. And I make people dig in deep. Now, here's the key, right? Okay, I decide I'm going to be a lawyer. Why? Because I watch TV and I like research and I love how lawyers appear on TV. Well, we both know. <laughs> Being a lawyer That's in real not life, how it works. <laughs> not exactly what it looks like on TV, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to really understand what that job is, right? So it's first I make people dream, really dream big, dream like you don't get to choose. I don't have enough money. You don't get to tell me that I can't go back to school. You don't get to tell me all the excuses. You dream and you look for anything that interests you, like anything. Then we sit down and we talk about those things. And I make them dig deeper. Now, go figure out what that is. Go talk to people, people who are actually in the job. If you talk to lawyers, they're going to tell you they're behind a desk most of the time, pushing paper or doing depositions, right? Yeah. Or filing on with the, the phone. Court. <laughs> yeah. Or on the phone, right? Like, and you may be like, oh, that's not what I thought it was. I thought I was going to be on stage, right? right? <laughs> so I make them dig in deep and that narrows that list way down. What's yeah. really great, though, is at that point, when they start talking to people, you should hear the excitement in clients' voices. You can imagine. I know when you have pivotal moments, right? With oh, your clients. of course. Of yeah. This course. is the moment that, where they go, oh, there's so much out there, right? Like, what do I want to do? And there's, it's not like I'm narrowed in. I'm not boxed in. Right. We narrow it down. We look at all the values. You know, do you want to move? Do you want to be in an office? There's all these things as well these days too, right? Do I want to be in an office? Do I want to commute? Do I want to work from home? There's all there's all things going on um, in addition to it. And so you look at all that, then you translate the skills from job descriptions when you finally figured out what you want to do. And then it goes all the way through the process to take you through how to build your resume, how to interview, how to answer that crazy question. So tell me about yourself. <laughs> It's a horrible question. Well, and so many day. people, well, and I'll tell you, especially people going through divorce, if somebody asked me, like, tell me about you, <laughs> the first place we always go is we identify as mom or dad, yes, We are. you know, and then, you know, and it's interesting because when I get on calls with, you know, people who are interested in either learning more or looking for support. Uh, the first question I always ask them is, so I want to know about you, like you as a person, not mom, not career, but like, you tell me lost. about you. And people go, I, I don't even know how to answer that. They and they'll answer. Really long time. Yeah. yeah. And, and it breaks my heart because it's so important for you to know who you are, right. To be able to sit down in an interview and say who you are, not what you do. Mm -hmm. It's not a question right? about your career. It's not. No. And it's not a question about your hobbies either. No, it's a question about who you are at your core. Right. So I work with clients on this question more than any other question. And it gets asked more than any other question. I believe about it. yourself. You know why people do that? You know why they ask that question? One of two things. One, they're trying to break the ice. It's not a good icebreaker, but they do. The other reason is they're actually scanning your resume because they haven't looked at it before the interview. And they're using that time to scan your resume. And so, you know, but you have to be able to answer it and answer it succinctly, right? All questions actually have to be answered under about two minutes. So you have to know what you want to say. And everybody flubs. They're like, blah, blah, you know, they don't know what to say and they don't prepare for it. But who you are at your core, it's, yeah. it's a, do you like to learn? And, and how does that permeate through your whole life, right? Yeah. Um, it's more than being a mom or being a dad. It's more than, you know, that I went skiing last weekend. It's more that I went to see a show. It could be, it could be about that. I love theater, right? I absolutely love theater. I love putting things together. And that's why I'm so creative. And when I watch theater, I can break it apart and really see the creative aspects of it. And that's why I'm, you know, that's why I chose a career in marketing, right? See how it's like at your core. Right. 
That's a beautiful example. I hope you all listen to that. And if you missed it, hit rewind and listen to that nugget again. Um, these are, I imagine, these are the nuggets that you provide, right, in all your playbook. Book, right? Yeah. So let's talk more about your book, which I can't, I've, I've read portions of it, right? But I can't wait to get my full on hands on, which, you know, I want an autographed copy. <laughs> yes, I owe you um, one. You were yes. in the book. I owe you one. In fact, I'll probably <laughs> send you this one right here this week. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I'm not worried at all. <laughs> but I want to talk more about the book because, you know, your book is different. It is different than other ones out there. So let's talk more about what makes this different because what you just said, I mean, so many, you know, a lot of what I do in my coaching is giving people language, right? Helping them to determine the language that they get to take out into the real world. And you're doing something very similar from the career perspective. Mm -hmm. So share more with the audience about what, what else makes your book different out there. I think the biggest thing is that it's from all different views, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about my own career trajectory, right, I've changed jobs. So I've actually done it uh, sometimes easier than others. And I've built kind of a, a career transition strategies. I've actually built a playbook, right? So that's number one it's from my point of view. It's also from the recruiter point of view. I not only interviewed a bunch of recruiters, but I work with recruiters. It's from the HR point of view. Don't forget, I sit on all the debriefs of when we're hiring big leaders. I sit in the debriefs of how these leaders think about how people interviewed, right? Because you only have one shot for an interview and it's a short period of time and they're judging you more or less. So I sit in those meetings and I listen to how people are perceived, right? And then on top of that, I also hire. So I'm a hiring manager. So I understand what a hiring manager is looking for, both in a resume and in an interview, you know, where people are doing well and not doing well. So I put all of that together in one book. And on top of that, most books are theory, right? Like, hey, you can do it. Right? Motivational. And I'm all for motivational. I think motivational is great. This book actually tells you how to do it down to the granular way of doing it, right? What is each step, how you can follow along and do it for your own career. Right. So that's the big difference from the view, the 100,000 foot view of all those areas. And then, of course, I also have the client stories, right? Because I, I help clients transition career. I've done hundreds at this point. And, you know, I've helped them transition careers and I've seen it all. And they interview. So they report back to me what was asked in all those interviews. I continually interview, not looking for a job. I talk to recruiters all the time, though. And I'll tell you why. I like to hear what they're asking. <laughs> and I've interviewed at some so of the big fascinating. Places, the Facebooks, the Googles. I've done Amazon. I've done them all. So I know exactly what they ask. And I'm writing notes. Hey, let me see what you're asking because they all have a playbook themselves. So having all that knowledge wrapped up into one book, it took two and a half years to put together to make sure it was really comprehensive. And that's what makes it different. It's amazing. You guys, there's some amazing, amazing, not just tips and tools, but the stories, right? The, the interviews that you did are real. They're real people. They're real experiences. Um, and you know, and I and I think that um, what also makes it unique too is that given the way of the world and and over the period of time that you've really been compiling this information has also been during a time where companies are starting to think differently about what uh, what the workplace looks like. I mean, I, if anything, COVID has taught that you know really we all could do our jobs virtually and probably more productively. Right. Right. So in some cases, yes. So what have you seen um, or what did you notice uh, from, you know, your own personal experience and also just from watching what your clients were experiencing, how it is today, because so many, so many of us going through divorce, you know, we've got crazy schedules right? Sometimes it's shared custody. Sometimes it's heavier uh, responsibilities. And, you know, the desire for flexibility is something that I know is scary for a lot of people to ask for, um, or to even think that they'll get it somewhere else. So what do you notice about, about that and those trends? Flexibility is key right now. Um, the job market is hot, incredibly hot, and that's not going to change. The job market is for the employee at this point. You can call your shots, more or less. There are not enough workers to fill all the jobs. And you get to ask in an appropriate way <laughs> for the things that you need. And you get to be a little bit more um, discerning as to what you want to go for. 
and how you want to do it. Um, and then any of the jobs, the other thing that's happening is people who would normally just hire near their office are now hiring worldwide. They're not just hiring in their office. They're open to people transferring their skills because they can't find enough workers. And as long as you position yourself well and show that you can do it, they are much more open than before. They're not going to find that person with 20 years experience. Either people are staying stable or they're being scooped up. Every offer we make right now, I would say they have two or three others in hand. Wow. And yeah, the competition's crazy. Now, again, you're going up against a bunch of other people too, but then what happens is those jobs trickle down right now. They have to replace that person. And so you know, it's a constant cycle, but I am seeing flexibility. People who want to work from home permanently, um, like you and me, like I love the fact that I work from home. <laughs> I never want to go back to an office and I get to be the mom I want to be right. Like I do drop off in the morning. I come in and I'm on meetings this morning. I was on a meeting during drop off. I just was off camera. I always text and say, Hey, I'm going to be off camera, but I'm listening. I get to do pickup middle of the day, three o'clock or sometimes one o'clock, right? If it's an early release, like I get to be that mom. I get to say, how was your day? Instead of having a nanny do it, right? Or instead of them going to aftercare. Then I get to come home. I set up my kids for success with their homework. Fortunately, mine are a little bit older. They're, you know, eight and 10. So they, they can do that on their own. And then I come back, I do a couple more meetings. And then maybe I'll catch up on some emails in the evening here and there. So everything's kind of blended and it works. You know, a, long, a while ago when COVID hit, we were told to go home, figure it out, go home, figure it out, figure it out with you, figure it out with your kids, figure it out. And a lot of kids were home being homeschooled. So now we figured it out, right? So now that we figured it out, a lot of companies are saying, huh, you figured it out. You're still doing okay as a company. Okay. This is work. Yeah. They're willing to have that flexibility. So again, that goes back to fear. Don't be fearful. I, by the way, I had this fear long before COVID. Um, I was 47. When I changed into an HR business partner role, 47, 48 years old. And I remember sitting in my coaching courses, Wendy, and saying to, and, and when you're coaching each other, and I remember going, I don't know if I should do this now. And maybe I should wait until they're older. My kids were younger, right? And maybe I, maybe I don't know if I'll have the flexibility. I work from home. I'll have a lot of flexibility. And I remember just crying it out in that session. And I came to a resident decision that I'll find the job that's good for me. It was really the fear. It was the fear of not knowing. And you know yeah. something? I found a great job that was had all the flexibility that I wanted, had unlimited you know, paid time off. You have to really just go after it. Then you'll find out. You'll find out, right? And some companies, they're not going to be flexible. And that's okay. Not the company for you. Exactly. I, I say that too, because I always, I always say that, well, first of all, fear is, you know, false evidence appearing real, right? Fear Ooh, is not great. Real. Fear. That's a good line. I love that. <laughs> it's just, it's not. And, and if we continue to allow ourselves to be run, to run our lives through the lens of fear, you're not living, you know, you're, you're choosing, you're choosing to stay in the dark. And I always say, I mean, my God, those coaching courses, I've never been more uncomfortable in my whole entire life. Oh, and no. yet I've never grown so much in such a short period of time because I was, I was terrified of what was coming out. Exactly. And at the same time, I knew that if it didn't, that I wasn't going to be able to take that next step to really step into what I was destined to become to, you mm -hmm. know, what. And a lot of it too, you know, is also being guided to, to be told like, yes, I worked in corporate, I worked in ad sales and I was an entrepreneur working in corporate America. Sure. I launched regions from nothing. Right. So it was through that process where it's like, all of a sudden I was like, oh, wait a second. I am an entrepreneur. Why am I so scared to become one? Cause right. I've been one for 20 years. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, so I also, it, it's also helpful when you have that outside person kind of helping you to shine the light on what it is that you can't see because you see it through this lens of fear. And it's like on the light side, there's all this possibility. There's so much, all this opportunity. So much right. opportunity, jobs, um, any choices you make in your life. There's so much opportunity, so much possibility. And I know we probably sound like, you know, really positive people right, right now going, come on, you know, and somebody could be in their darkest days. And I will never discount somebody's feelings, right? We all have feelings. We have good days. We have bad days. This is life, um, especially now, you know, but at the same time, just to take that one moment to look outside and say, okay, 
maybe I am stuck in fear. Maybe I am not moving forward because of that. Maybe I'm not looking at this the right way. And who do I talk to about that? Um, What coach do I talk to? Maybe I read the first two chapters of my book, which will get you out of that really quick. I have a whole list of why you're stuck and how those are just excuses because I thought I was at one point too. Um, But that's, that's the key, right? I remember my husband, Wendy, he worked for himself. When I worked at NBC and at Viacom, you know, he worked for himself. I had the 401k. I had the long-term incentive plan. I had the steady paycheck. I had the benefits. So I couldn't change careers. This was around that time, that 47, 48, when I was bawling, right? And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't change. I have to be the stable one because stability is a huge value of mine. Huge. Guess what happened? My husband got a job (laughs) in corporate America. And guess what happened to me? I crumbled because it wasn't actually that I was stuck. It was because I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew I didn't want to do what I was doing, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So that woke me up. And not everybody gets woken up that way, but I got woken up like, you actually have to now look at this. You have to dig in and look at this. So mine was an event. Sometimes it's a person that helps you see this. Yeah. But I, in that moment said, all right, I got to, I got to actually have a path and figure out like what to do. And I met with a career coach. He wasn't great or awesome. He was good enough. And he got me to talk to people. And I talked to one person who was pivotal. You know how you said I was pivotal in your life. I have the, I have mine too. His name's Nathan. And my one pivotal person in my life, he's now a recruiter at LinkedIn. LinkedIn. At the time he was at Facebook, I believe. And Nathan had on his LinkedIn at the time, he said, you know, if you're looking for career advice, you know, hit me up kind of thing. So I hit him up and I said, hey, can, can you meet with me or can you talk to me on the phone? And it took six weeks to get the phone call. I got the phone call. I was sitting in a, in a hallway in a hotel the day before Thanksgiving, you know, to visit my family. <laughs> and I get on the phone and I say to him, I've got all these skills. Like I worked in reality television. I was a TV news reporter. I, I've. I've got all these skills and none of them equate to anything. Like, what do I do? I thought maybe as a recruiter, you might know of jobs that I'm not thinking of. Like, what what can I do with all of this? You know, I have immigration, child labor, foreign travel, safety, security. You know, I was a TV news reporter. And he says to me, have you ever thought of HR business partner? And I said to him, well, yeah, but I don't want to be in HR. Like they process leaves of absence and, you know, and they know the HR laws. And I know that I'm an, I'm a lawyer and I'm in the labor and employment department, technically speaking, but I don't really know those laws. And he goes, no, 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 back up. He goes, HR business partner is a strategic partner that helps use talent to drive the business forward. And I was like, wait, what, what? Like never heard of this one, never heard of it, never met an HR person in my life that did this, right? When I was uh, in corporate America, like never heard of this before. And I was like, wait, what? And so I said, all right, well, and he's like, you know, the other thing would be this. And I'd already said, I don't want to be in PR and I don't want to be a legislative aide. And I've looked into these things. And, and he said, well, well, look it up and let me know what you think. And so I looked it up and here's the kicker. Every role you see out there, whether it's business operations Revenue operations, sales operations, um, HR business partner, um, you know, engineering, they're all different. It doesn't matter what the title is. They're all different. All the jobs are different. So you can find HR business partner roles that are generalist roles. You can find ones that are strategic. They have the word coach in it, right? Okay. You can find ones that are operations. There's all these different parts of HR. I didn't even know there were different parts of HR. And so I, the more I researched, I honed in and honed in and honed in and found certain descriptions that all started to sound the same. They all had the word coach in it. Over and over, coach, 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 senior leaders, coach, senior leaders, right? So it takes that one person or that one wake up moment, like out of fear to know that there's possibilities and to either have that one advocate or that one moment, that shiny moment of I'm going to take a step. And that one step could be either, you know, not to plug the book, but either reading the book or talking to you or talking to me, talking to a career coach and figuring out, okay, I just need to help me get out of this fear thing. Yeah. And help me take that one step because it only takes that one phone call. I mean, you called me, right? I called Nathan. It takes one person. One phone call. I mean, that's it. And and it's about, it's a phone call to, to just, and something we learned in our coaching program, right? It's about curiosity, to to shift the fear into curiosity. It doesn't mean you're leaving tomorrow. It doesn't mean that something is changing tomorrow. You're simply getting curious about what is out there. That's it. 
That's curiosity. It. Be curious. It's in the book too. It's you hit on it. Yeah. I don't know if you read that section, but there's a I huge didn't. section about that. Yes. There's a oh, whole section on that. And I tell a story about somebody who's just innately curious about his life. He was a BMX bike rider, top of his game and got injured. And he's a naturally curious person and what that did for him. It's right. into the yeah. first couple chapters. Yeah. So oh, but there you go. Guys. There you go. You hit on it, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and clear. And it's true. It's yeah. just knowing there's possibilities, being curious of them and not limiting yourself. Right. No limiting. Absolutely. Talk. No limiting beliefs are what hold us all back. And Lord knows that I was allowing that to happen as I was, you know, in the depths of despair and pain so and I. hurt and not knowing how to get out of the quicksand that was literally swallowing me whole. Um, Mm -hmm. So Marlo, oh my goodness, this, oh my God, you're going to have to come back on. (laughs) I would love (laughs) to come back on. I have you back anytime. I'm happy to go more granular with your listeners and viewers. Like this is so much fun. I mean, just because I love you to death. I mean, I'm just so happy for you and proud of you and what you've done with your life and that you help so many people. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I marvel, I marvel at where you've come in such a short period of time. It's just amazing. Aww, thank you, honey. Well, it literally wouldn't have happened had you not been mm-hmm. vulnerable and shared that Facebook post and and gotten on a phone call with me and, and truly like helped me to see the light that was possible in my life. And, um, you know, I want people to know where they can find you, where they can mm-hmm. purchase your amazing yes. new book. So share with my listeners, please. Sure. That so, information. Uh, you, absolutely. You can find it on Amazon and Apple. Those are the two big places. Um, there is a uh, all sorts of formats, you know, ebook, audiobook, and paperback. So whatever your listening pleasure or viewing pleasure is. And then coaching for me directly is MarloLionsCoaching.com. So you can go to my website yes, and uh, learn more about what I do in the coaching world. Amazing. And you guys, all of that information will be in the show notes. So you can click those URLs and those links. You can easily get in touch with Marlo. Marlo, I absolutely love and adore you. Thank you for being my guest today. And thank you for gifting the world with your knowledge and just being truly my guiding light through a very dark time in my life. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. And everybody tuning in, thank you so much for being with us today, for sharing your time. I hope that you gained an just a million nuggets of information. I know that I got some really good ones from Marlo today. So that is my goal with every single podcast episode is to really help you wherever it is that you are in your divorce process, sending you all tons of love, light, and joy as always. Bye, everybody.